Hello everybody, my name is Tuba Splat, and it's going to be a different kind of video today. So, as we all know, in the world of professional wrestling, um, Brody Lee passed away. John Hoover, who we all know as Luke Harper in WWE, as well as Brody Lee in AEW, and in the independent circuit, passed away this past Saturday, the 26th of December, 2020. Um, uh, shockingly as well um, just trying to get my collective thoughts it's still it's unbelievable to me um, because he was arguably starting to get to his peak of his career in AEW um, granted I, for my own personal reasons I hardly watch AEW but that's beside the point um, just it's always tragic whenever we lose a wrestler um, but for some reason for Brody it was different um, just the outpouring support from everyone in WWE to AEW to basically anybody whoever he got in contact with that knows John Huber um, knows that he was a hard-working family man and that's all he ever really cared about is providing the same lifestyle his dad had for him that he wants to pass on for his own kids. Um, we're still getting details as they emerge. Um, for those who don't know, he did pass away Saturday. Um his wife posted on social media that it was a lung issue that is not COVID related. Thank God. Um, but now, cause I saw today, and of course I get all my information off Reddit. So, you know, it's a good place. Um, I'm being facetious, of course. Um, apparently Dave Meltzer, I believe is now reporting that he was hospitalized since late October. Um, Cause I believe what I was reading briefly was that he was on, he was exercising on a Peloton. Well, okay. So let's back up a little bit that his last match, what would be his last match was a dog collar match between himself and Cody for the AEW TNT title. They were already going to write him off to sell the the match and the storyline. Um, but then I guess it, somehow in between they found that he had an ankle injury. So he was working on that. But then I guess now the story is that he had, he was working on a pel He was riding a Peloton and he wasn't able to finish a workout. And while that, I believe it, it's saying that it was ab he realized it was not normal. It was abnormal. So I'm going to assume from this point on, because I don't remember the finer details, that he went and, sell, went and got himself checked in. And again, his final match was on October 7th, and he's been hospitalized since late October. And he passes away on Boxing Day, the 26th of December. So two months that he's been hospitalized, was hospitalized. Um, again, it's, it's still unreal to me. And sometimes I'm seeing fan art, um, and it's just, it's making me <laughs> tear up. Um, and, and like I was starting to say earlier, and I'm sorry if I'm just going to be rambling on this is normally what I do, but anyway, I'm trying to keep myself organized. I've been kind of been playing this whole video in my head. Um, he was, he's different. Brody Lee, John Huber was different. Cause as soon as the news was broken, was breaking literally, it seems like almost the entire wrestling world stopped Whether, because it, even WWE acknowledges it, and then even Impact, who he has never worked for before, 
and then you got people who you know you got wrestlers like EC3, CM Punk, and then all of uh, pro wrestling tees and shop in uh, AEW. All the proceeds for I believe the next month, so it'll be like the next 30, 31 days. They're all gonna go to his family, and even Cultaholic for the next month. When you buy merch, I think it's for the next month, or is it just like this coming Wednesday? Dynamite, whatever. Um, the proceeds are gonna be donated to the uh, American Lung Association. So, um, but again, as I started to say a couple times now, that he was different, and again, it's always tragic whenever we lose a wrestler one form or another. Um, but for Brody, it cuts deeper for me. Um, so for those who don't know, I live in upstate New York. I live 45 minutes from the Pennsylvania border. Um, there was a wrestling organization that traveled all throughout New York state called squared circle wrestling to CW. Shout out to those folks. Um, and my first ever show was in early 2011, or it was in 2011, regardless. And apparently, in looking it up on Cage Match, he was on that show. But I'm just going to skip ahead to the second show I ever went to for indie wrestling, um, where he competed in a Fatal Four Way Championship match between himself, Jay Freddy, Jason Axe, and Eddie Edwards. Um, see, just seeing him, you knew he was special, and for a man of his size to be, I would say flying around the ring, but that's not really quite it. But being able to do Hurricane Ron as doing Tope Suicida as doing all sorts of springboard stuff, that's something you don't see very often from a man of his size. So I knew he was different, and again, researching all this on Cage Match, I found out that that show was like right before he signed with NXT, which I was also very excited and pre was also very excited about that he got signed to NXT and see where they would go from there with him. And it turns out it was the Wyatt family and that turned out to be a success, but it's not their fault <laughs> if they didn't. Um, Cause they ran that whole thing with them and the shield. Um, with, they were the two hottest acts in the WWE and then they split, and then Harper Brody won the Intercontinental Championship. He would he would win the SmackDown Tag Team titles. And then he would sustain some injuries, as well as then have creative differences with WWE. Um, and understandably, everyone in the wrestling community was agreeing with him that he should leave and be granted his release from WWE and then he was going to go he went to AEW and then COVID happened and he was supposed to debut in his hometown of Rochester where I've spent three years earning my photography degree at his the home arena and I would assume it would be the Blue Cross Arena I don't know where else it could be in Rochester um, so that would have been a huge moment. Um, but anyway, he would go on to feud and I, again, I'm just kind of recapping from AEW cause I, I don't watch AEW. He even feuded with John Moxley for the world title. And then he got into the program with Cody in the TNT title. Um, and that's where it all ended. Um, and again, just this kind of reaches a different level for me because I mean as wrestlers your career is playing out on live television every week that you're booked and to be able to say I was a fan and followed his career I mean not in depth but just as much as a fan can without being stalkery territory that I followed him since 2012 in Square Circle Wrestling 
to AEW in 2020. So I felt, I feel really connected to Brody. Um, it was just extremely heartbreaking to hear the news. And then again, just to have him leave behind a young family with two young boys and his wife. Um, and just seeing all the tributes from people who worked with them from Bray to Randy Orton to even Titus that they all said the same thing that he's a family man and he's just doing the best he can and even I saw earlier today um, Enzo Amore's reaction to Brody's death and he was saying like Hey kid, what's your finish? And he was just like even taking bumps for Enzo. It's like he would give you the shirt off his back and just Brody was an amazing person. Let's just say it. And again, the fact, the sad reality is that wrestlers don't live very long through one reason or another. This in Brody's case, it was a complete freak thing. Um, so it's just, Again, the whole world, the whole wrestling world's in shock right now. Um, and so am I. I'm, it's just, it's it's so sad. And um, again, I'm still trying to <laughs> comprehend it. That just a guy I saw in American Legions in 2012, and he's gone. I've gone back and rewatched the montage that his his home promotion home uh, upstate pro wrestling I believe it was shared on reddit I will even put a link to it in the description of this video um, that they have a montage for him and it's just I believe it's Johnny Cash a Johnny Cash song that they got playing for him and it's just it keeps hitting me in the feels so it's hard it's really like I never would have thought I would feel this way about a wrestler <laughs> as I do with Brody. Um, and again, there's just several wrestlers and even like AEW and pro wrestling tees. Any proceeds that you buy on their website, um, they're being donated to his family. And then Punk with his online store, I don't think it's specifically his pro wrestling tees store, he's donating all proceeds to. Brody's family and EC3 doing the same thing because he owns his own print shop. Um, so I bought one of his shirts because, again, I'm not I'm not a big AEW person, but I kind of skipped the Dark Order stuff and I bought the shirt from EC3 store. I'll put all the links, all of those in the description too. Um, so yeah, it's... I just wanted to give my thoughts, kind of get this off my chest because I feel like I needed to make this video because... Again, it's just something I've never felt about a wrestler as I do with Brody Lee. Um, kind of just seeing his career unfold and then to be to be cut off when he was just starting to reach his peak in AEW after that dog collar match with Cody. It's just so much potential, untapped potential that it's gone. And it goes without saying that what they do in wrestling is it's per, it's a performance and even some there is performance art and to a degree when it's all storytelling I would almost put wrestling in that category of performance art um, but again just to have your whole career broadcasted to millions of people um and even for me just when he's still in the independence it's hard not to feel kind of any kind of emotion so um again i'm I'm kind of rambling on nonsensically but um again i i just had to get this off my chest because Again, with artists and wrestlers, you don't really, you don't fully appreciate them until they're gone, and that's the sad reality of that too. So, 
Brody, thank you for everything you've done and condolences to your family um, and many of the other <laughs> Brody Lee fans out there. Um, we'll get through this. We're all, I mean, obviously I can't feel the same pain that they're feeling, but as a community, we'll get through this just like the world is right now with COVID and any other stuff that's going on right now. So <sighs> thank you everybody so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.